David Barnson uh, working with me this morning here in New York. I suspect that the market is down because Putin's rattling his nukes. Is there any other reason? No, that's really the only headline news. And I want to always remind people when valuations are really high and then you get this kind of geopolitical yeah. scare, the volatility goes up because people are more jittery because you're coming from a place of high valuation already. And look, you can't hedge against nuclear war. You right. don't go down 500 points on nuclear war. You go down 5,000 points. What you can do is buy some gold and you can buy some treasury securities. Well, treasury is usually because the fight to safety. And that's what we got. And, and so I think you're going to see some of this. But again, we've seen it before with North Korea years ago, and it lasted a few days. I don't think this ends up being something sustainable, but you know, you get traders that get a little scared. Of course they do. Yeah. Uh, let's talk Walmart. They reported before the bell this morning, looks about 45, but maybe an hour ago. Uh, the earnings came in strong, and the stock's up 2%. What does that tell you about the economy? Um, it was up 4% earlier, and if, it, if the Dow weren't down over 500, Walmart would be up right. 4%. So it's a very strong report, and it tells you that Walmart is executing. It is not a macroeconomic story, because other stores have not done as well. It's a Walmart story because they're e-commerce, they're execution, they're marketing. They're just a very well-run business, Stuart. And that's a record high for the stock, or it was early. I think it was 87 earlier today. And they have raised the dividend 50 years in a row, my Well, friend. that's right up your street, is it not? <laughs> okay. I want to talk about... Trump's cabinet. It's unconventional by any standard, but is it the kind of cabinet that can get Trump's economic reforms passed? Well, we don't have the economic cabinet yet. That's the problem. Yeah. Is is uh, I love these energy picks. I loved some of the the national security picks. There are a couple I don't. We won't get into those. <laughs> but the economic picks are still coming. Treasury, National Economic Council, Commerce. Commerce. These yeah. haven't come yet. So who do you like see. for Treasury? Well, um, there's a, a few names I really like. Kevin Warsh, who uh, was a colleague of mine at Morgan Stanley, used to work at the Fed, is being interviewed. From what I hear, I like him a lot. And I would love Mark Rowan, the CEO of Apollo. Hmm. As you know, I own Apollo, but I know of Mark Well and his work. Uh, we'll see. They had some switch-ups. There were a couple people that were jockeying for it, and they're, they seem to be on the outs right now. All right. Better take a look at the price of gold as well. It is a safe haven. It's on the upside, $2,634 per ounce. Uh, this is a safe haven, the need for a safe haven rising after Putin's nuclear threat. Now look at the 10-year Treasury. That also a safe haven. Money pours into it because it's safe. The price goes up, and therefore the yield comes down. 437 right now on the the tenure. David, uh, am I right here? These are safe haven investments. Uh, which you don't have to last for a long time, but, but today they're a safe haven. Well, they are, but yeah, you know, that's not a huge move. But again, the Treasury is always a safe haven. It doesn't have to be the tenure. It can be the short term as well, because sometimes people just want to go in the 90 day. But the tenure is obviously going up. When the yield goes down, the price goes up. And the Treasury has been the biggest safe haven asset for over 100 years in the world. And that is the big financial story of the day. David, thank you. Uh, the latest on NVIDIA, Blackwall chip overheating issue. What's the latest? Yeah, so we talked about this yesterday, right? Some concerns that there were about 72 Blackwell chips that go into this big server rack, and there were some concerns about overheating. That led to a big decline yesterday. Today, the shares are trying to rally again in anticipation of the big earnings report tomorrow. Uh, David Barnson sitting next to me. You really want to say something? Well, I just wanted to point out that NVIDIA could have a huge quarter because they usually do and the stock could come down because you get to a point where they are expecting even better than huge news. And that's what happens with these very high valuation stories. Uh, it's priced in that NVIDIA is going to be growing earnings something like 50 <laughs> percent. No, literally. Well, it's incredible. It really is. David, back to you. You brought, as usual, your dividend picks, and you're starting with an ETF. It's UMI. And I've talked to you about it on the show before, yeah. but I have to bring it back up because it was last week, oil was down over 5%. The S&P was down over 2%. And in the, in the aftermath of President Trump's election, midstream was up 1.5%. This is up 50% on the year, and it's still trading at a very low and attractive valuation with a high dividend yield. Why? Because we need to move more oil and gas around. Sure. President Trump supports improving new projects and LNG that we need to sell to the rest of the world. This is where some of the companies that make the terminals yeah, export right. liquefied natural gas. It's what? a huge growth story. What is the dividend? It, it, because the stock's up a lot. It's a yield right now about over 4% and oh. growing double digits per year. Well, that's good. Yeah, so for our dividend from where we purchased it, it's about 15%. David, still with me. Look, I know you're Thank a dividend you. guy. Yeah. Are you an early adopter for something like these self-driving cars? 
Um, look, there are certain investors who have a risk profile that they can take that risk, and it's not what we do. It's not really what I believe in. But you're right, early adopter. You can make a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money. There's a lot of unanswered questions. I'm not convinced we're ever going to get to a point where we have full autonomy in cities. I don't think it makes sense up and down Fifth Avenue, if you know what I mean. I do know. But certainly mean. open highways, there's going to be a future utility. But a lot of companies are going to get into this and lose a lot of money. Got it. Thank you, David. And thanks for being with us for yes, the sir. hour. Always appreciate it. Thank Always. you.